Hi, today we're assessing the heart and peripheral vascular. So the first thing that I do is I check the patient's chart, perform hand hygiene, enter the room, provide privacy, introduce myself to the patient. Hi, my name is Frank. I'm going to be your student nurse today. Could you tell me your name and uh, birth date, please? Uh, my name is Brian Lamo. I was born January 14, 2000. Excellent, Brian. Um, so today we're going to be assessing your heart and your peripheral vascular. That's what you had come in for. Is that going to be all right with you today? Yeah. Okay. This procedure is going to involve me touching your neck and uh, your chest and listening to your your heart sounds with my stethoscope. So that's okay with you? All right. Okay. Um, so Brian, I got some questions for you. Um, ha do you have any hypertension, cholesterol in your family? Um, no, not that I know. Okay. Have you ever experienced anything the doctor's ever mentioned it to you? No. Okay. What about heart murmurs? It's like you'll be able to feel like sometimes like a little racing in your chest. Your doctor ever said he heard something funny? Yeah. No? Okay. What about heart disease? Is that something that might run in either side of your family? Not that I know of. Not you ever know of? Okay. Um, are you a smoker, a drinker, or have you ever used drugs? No. What about in the family? No. Okay. Um, nobody smokes around you in the house? No. Nothing like that? Okay, good. Um, have you ever experienced shortness of breath? No, not unusual. Okay. Um, so climbing the stairs has never been an issue for you? Never no. been shortness of breath from that? Okay. Um, what about fatigued? Have you ever just, other than the time that you were actually sick, did you ever feel like you were just lethargic and tired and you just didn't want to get up and do anything? No. No? Okay. Um, what about chest pain? Have you ever felt any chest pain? No. Nothing? Oh, what about in the family? You ever noticed mom and dad complain of chest pain or anything like that? No. No? Good. All right. Um, have you ever, ever noticed like bluish tints to your, your lips or your fingertips or your toes? No. Okay. And uh, again, family? No. Pretty much any question I ask you also pertains to the family, okay? Yeah. Okay, I just got to see if it runs down through the family genes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you on any medications? No. I mean, I take vitamins. But vitamins? Okay, what kind do you take? Uh, teen one a days. Teen one a days? Yeah. Hmm, are those good? Yeah. Working for you? Yeah. Good. All right. Um, do you do any exercises or any self-care measures, something, you know, anything to help promote good heart health? I mean, I work out and I, okay. I uh, eat healthy foods. Do you? Yeah. Okay, what kind of foods do you like? Um, vegetables. and. You really and like stuff. vegetables? Nobody I, ever says I that. That's awesome. I do. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think uh, when my dad cooks them, they're really good. So. Oh, good. Well, your dad must be a pretty awesome guy. He's awesome. Okay. okay. So anyways, <laughs> right. Um, okay. So at this point in the video, what I would want to do is start assessing uh, the, the, the neck for Brian. And so what we normally do is lay him down because I'm looking for jugular vein distension um, and also like a pulsating of it. And what you're going to find, go ahead and look this way. Son. So you're going to see right in here uh, where the jugular vein is, it's going to be like pulsating. It'll be really distended and it'll be pretty obvious. So obviously if you check one side, right, go ahead and turn your head, you're going to want to look on the other side as well. Um, so assuming that we laid them down already and let's say we did see it, what I'd want to do is sit them up to a 45 degree angle, which he is not at, he's at a 90 degree angle, but we're going to assume it's a 45 for the sake of the video. Go ahead and look straight. Um, so now what we want to do, we want to see if that went away. So now what we're trying to do is look for his carotid. So we're going to go ahead and look this way again and we want to look in the lower one third. If you don't find it lightly, it's okay to press so you can feel it here and then you can actually follow it down and then you want to see in the lower one third. I can feel it. Good. And then whatever you do to one side, do it to the other side, right? Good. Excellent. All right. Um, you don't want to do them at the same time because that reduces blood flow to the brain. Don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, Brian, is um, I'm going to go ahead and take a listen. Um, it's called a brewery. Sorry, I had to think for a second. I'm tired. Uh, we're listening for a brewery. And when you do that, you want to use the bell of your stethoscope. So what? Battery. You're Battery. shitting me. It's always something. I'm still recording. Should be okay. All right, we're back. Sorry, my battery's dying. That's why I'm trying to rush the video. There's always something here. Last time my alarm went off and I lost the whole 10 minute video. I had to start over. All right. Good. Go ahead and look this way. Yep. So lower one third again. I'm listening for a whooshing sound. There's nothing there. Um. You'll also hear like a cat purring sound and you'll feel like a vibration. That's that's the brewy. You're not supposed to feel it, but if you do, it's an indication. Sounds normal. Okay, good. Turn that off. Very good brain. 
All right, so now I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna check his upper extremities and I'm looking at the skin color. It's appropriate for his ethnicity. I'm feeling with the back of my hand for temperature, moisture, and dryness. Uh, I'm looking for any skin lesions of any kind. Uh, feeling for edema as I press down. I don't see any edema, uh, so that would indicate a zero. It can go up to a four, so if it leaves like a pit when you push there, that's a four plus. Um, what else? I'm looking for, um, same thing on both sides. Oh, hair distribution. I knew there was something I was missing. So hair distribution. I, uh, I want to make sure that it's even, symmetrical on both arms, right? It's good. Um, I'm not missing anything. I want to do a brachial pulse. Go ahead. It's going to be towards the, uh, the medial. I can feel brachial pulse on both of them, and they're, they're bounding, and they're at the same time. Same thing for the radial pulse, which is going to be on the outer side here. There we go, I can feel it now. And they're, yep, simultaneous. Excellent. I also want to go ahead and check for capillary refill. It's just pressing on the middle 30 is a good indication. It should refill within three seconds, which it is actually under a second, it appears. So he's doing just fine. Okay, so now I want to do the lower extremities. Again, it's the same thing. We're going to have to move the chair back. Yeah. Sorry, we went through this once. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and set your foot up here. Very good. I'm going to put it up on my thigh just so that you can see. It's the same assessment as it was the upper extremity, right? We're checking. I'm feeling for uh, temperature, moisture, dryness. Same thing on both legs. Um, how we're, I'm, I'm looking for lesions and skin ulcers, anything that I can find that's an indication. He does have a sore here. We assessed this just a moment ago and he had said he had dropped something on it uh my guitar amp guitar amp so we did indicate where that had come from um again edema i'm pressing on it there's no it's a zero so he's doing great there uh dorsalis pedius uh pulse i want to feel that right here coming down the main toe if you come just to the side of it there i can feel a strong bold bounding pulse which indicates a four plus on that or not four i'm sorry a three on that um and then i want his tibial pulse which is bounding as well other leg same assessment right his hair is evenly distributed from this leg to that leg um temperature is the same if i felt warmth on one side more so than the other we might want to investigate that a little bit uh edema is at a zero. Dorsalis pedius, again, a nice bounding pulse there. And then where his ankle is over to the side is his tibial pulse. And again, that is a nice bounding. Oh, one more, two more things. I'm sorry. A femoral pulse. Obviously, I'd be feeling for that here. For the sake of the video, that's a little, I'm not going to do that. It's a little inappropriate, but I would be feeling for it. And you would feel that bilaterally. Also, um, his popliteal. Go ahead and flex. He will, the patient will flex it. And I will, in that um, uh, popliteal fossa, you're going to place your fingers and press on that, and you will feel that pulse bilaterally. Flexation, excellent. Good. Go ahead and have a seat. Right. I'm going to check the camera and make sure that we have this. In there. I just want to get this done. All right there. Yep, that's about where my head will be. Very good. Okay, so at this point in time, we're going to do the anterior chest. And so I will have the patient go ahead and remove his shirt. Go ahead. I give him privacy for this, of course. So assessing for color, uh, temperature all the way down, hair distribution. I want to stand here and I want to look for heaves in his chest. I'm not seeing any heaves, which is a good thing, or any lifts, anything like that. Um, if I was, that you know, you might want to investigate that again. You know, anything that's abnormal, if you're thinking it's abnormal, it probably is abnormal. You want to investigate those things. Okay, so we are. I'm making notes on him so that you can see because in the video sometimes things don't show up too well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and point out some things. Supercostal notch. Here's his clavicle bone. I'm going to make marks on him. Like again, I wouldn't do this on a, on a patient. This is his um, mid. Uh, clavicular uh, line right here, right? Because here's his clavicle. So these are like his, I'm just pointing out some landmarks so you know where they are. Okay, <clears throat> so I would start there and then the first rib cage, um, here's this second rib cage, you can feel it. So here's a right and a left. 
Here's this third one. In between each space here is your um, intercostal margins. Here's four and here is five. And each of these is your R2 is your aortic, uh, L2 is your pulmonic, and then you have herbs point, which is number three, um, which is actually kind of in between number three and number four, actually. Uh, and then, so you skip four, and then it'll be five is the, um, five is, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Um, mid, so your MCL, your M, yeah, right here. Actually, it's, it's going to be right here is where we're going to be checking his apical pulse and his uh, mitral valve. So, again, we are going to go to his aortic. We're going to use the bell. Lub dub, lub dub. So, you're listening for S1 and S2. S1 and S2 is a normal lub dub pattern. In these places that I'm checking, what we're looking, for, what we're listening for, is anything other than that. We want to identify that that's there, but we also want to identify if there's anything else there. So I'll be checking these places. If I hear something that is like an extra beat, it's an indication of an S3 or an S4 noise. Um, also, I'm listening for uh, murmurs, which is like a gallop. Uh, I could also hear there. There might be um, um, an S. Like there's a split S2 is what it's called, and when he inhales, what you're some what you could possibly be hearing is a pulmonic and aortic valves closing simultaneously, and they do it really fast. So it's like an extra sound that you hear, and it can sound really fast. So I'm just gonna shoot through these real fast for the sake of the video. I'm just taking the battery. Is it going again? It's about no no no. It's it's just about to die. So oh yeah. okay. So here's your R2 aortic. Love dub love dub love dub. Um, here's my L2 pulmonic, okay, in between each, these are intercostal spaces here, herbs point, and the tricuspid, which is L5, oh, that's why, you want to use the diaphragm, very good, it's three, Herbs point, tricuspid, and then over here, good. That's your MCL mitral, that's your mitral uh, valve and your apex valve. So everything with Brian seems to be fine. Brian, have you got any other concerns that you'd like to address? No. Okay, so I know it's kind of a rush through, but my battery's about to die, so, and that's it.